video too. Over there. Red one. So the scripture says in two passages, Galatians 5, verse 1, it was for freedom that Christ set us free. Therefore, keep standing firm and do not be subject again to a yoke of slavery. Again, what were, what was the yoke of slavery that we were under? Paul says in verse 16, do you not know when you present yourself to someone as slaves for obedience? You are slaves of the one whom you obey, either of sin resulting in death or of obedience resulting in righteousness. In the book of Timothy, Paul's letter to the church, Paul's letter to the uh, young man, he says in uh, 2 Timothy 2, chapter 2, verse 26, and they may come to their senses and escape from the snare of the devil, having been held captive by him to do his will. So we see sin can enslave and the devil can take you captive to do, you, to do his will. I sort of feel like that the, at this hour. These people want to control my property. Sort of like the Native Americans who lost their property to the ancient settlers who are now called Americans. It's a terrible thing in the 21st century when an African woman tells you in your ear that you need to submit to her because she sent for you. Cardinal McCluskey's, which was a group home for children, took me from under the care of that woman and freed me from her family. Obviously, they were not friends. They were my enemies. If they were my friends, the school in White Plains, New York, wouldn't have had to remove me from under their care for child abuse. What became of child abuse is sexual assault. Slavery is still alive and well in the United States. The ancient slavery that we know of against the African people is still here. Therefore, the 13th Amendment of this United States is a lie. Slavery continues. Biblical slavery is no different than African-American slavery. And it's still here. And God considers slavery to be a sin. Holding people back, diminishing people, cutting them down, it is a sin of the devil. It is a sin of evil. Why? Do we want to live in a generation among a people that advocates slavery as a way of life, as a relationship with another? Are we not all on the same boat? Are we not all going in the same direction? As I'm talking, you can hear pride for young European men talking like they're free, talking down to me as if they're above me beyond me, beyond my reach. In other words, I can't rise up to their so-called European level. Problem here is that we're all in the same boat, going in the same direction, breathing the same air, drinking the same water, eating the same food, going to the same hospitals, the same supermarkets, same schools, same education system. If you have money, it's the same money. We live in a generation where people are still looking down on each other as subordinates, subjugates. Why would two storages go out of their way to please these old people that I have no relationship with? And if it's not them, then is it the government or the police department that's in the background doing these things? controlling the computer so that I don't download and I don't have a copy of a paid receipt 
showing that the property that's in these two storages are my own and they've been paid for. If I have no proof that has been paid for, what do they intend to do? I went looking for housing this past week and what did they do? They kept me from finding decent housing, raising the prices when they didn't need to, lying about prices when they didn't need to. What exactly are these people getting out of all these lies, acts of manipulation, acts of savagery, sabotaging the computer, keeping the computer from opening an internet site just so that I don't download or save the receipt. What kind of power trip are these people on? Using homosexuality to entice me. Using homosexuality to bring me down. Constantly suggesting homosexuality, but then using Gabriel to take sex from my body when I'm asleep. Waking up in the middle of the night with a hard on because they were in the tent giving me Viagra, Cialis, whatever else they've pumped in my body so she can molest me in front of the American people, molest me in front of the police department, molest me in front of the MacArthur's, molest me in front of the LGBTQ community, molest me in front of the African American community and other Haitians that may be there videotaping to show that I'm her, sub her subjugate. Why is it that the police department is accepting this? What happened to the government, the federal government that says that foreigners are allowed to live here under this naturalization order as free and equal to that of any American? You say the African American people are free because of the 13th Amendment? Let's ask George Floyd if he was free. Let's ask the 17, the, the young man from 2017 who was choked and beaten with a flashlight over his head by the same police officer whether he feels that he is free. Let's ask if he's still alive, Rodney King, if he is free. From what I heard, after the damages of a police officer beating him, he ended up dying five years later. When you look at Africans in this country, do you consider them to be free? Or do you still consider them to be your subjugates, people that need to submit to you in the community? When we come to America, nine times out of 10, we foreigners don't know nothing about the community relationship. The Europeans, the settlers, now called the Americans, in a relationship with Africans, is it a free relationship? A relationship based on freedom or a relationship based on subjugation, subordination, fear, manipulation, and slavery? What about the relationship between the settler and the Native American? What kind of a relationship is that? Is it a relationship based on freedom, respect, or are we still brutalizing the Native American people for their land to show them that we've got the guns and we've got the power? What about the foreigners that you give these naturalization certificates to? What kind of relationship are you expecting from them? We're not Native Americans. We don't own the land. We're not African Americans. We didn't come with whips and chains. What exactly are you communicating when you remove the relationship out of the bracket and the boundary of this certificate that says that we're naturalized in Americans? What are you expecting as an American people, you in the African American community, you in the Native American community, and you in the settlership community? What are you expecting our relationship to be with you? Is it one of subjugation or one of equality? You know what it's like to be in a relationship with these European Americans today. 
as a result of the history that you've had with them. But what are you expecting from us, internationals, born abroad, now having to deal with you on the issue of sex, on the issue of education, housing, banking, all of the issues that you yourselves have dealt with in the last 400 years. What about when the international becomes a Christian and he no longer is running with the federal government, but is running with God? What is your relationship with that Christian international now? Do you disrespect him, cut him down, make him feel like he's less than a man? As often as I am being made to feel, not just living in Portland, Oregon, but anywhere in this United States. Before coming down here, Gabriel says to me, you know, you're gonna have to leave the country. And I'm saying to myself, well, I'm a naturalized citizen. Why do I have to run? What am I running from? The Ku Klux Klan is no longer out. We have the 13th Amendment. What, what are we running from? I listen to the voice of MacArthur's daughter, who's constantly telling me, you're not a lead. You're not the lead. Well, obviously I'm not the lead. The word of God says that Jesus Christ is the head of the church. When you go to Colossians chapter one, Colossians one says this, he is also head of the body, the church, and he is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, so that he himself will come to have first place in everything. For it was the father's good pleasure for all the fullness to dwell in him and through him to reconcile all things to himself, having made peace through the blood of his cross, through him I say, whether things on earth or things in heaven. The scripture says, he is before all things and in him all things hold together. Who are we talking about? Jesus. When the foreigner comes into the United States and appreciates the certificate, but then runs into Jesus our Lord, Jesus, our Savior, Jesus, our Messiah, the one who resurrected from the grave, whom we celebrated at Easter last month. What is now the relationship to be with you Americans? Are we to push Jesus aside and submit to the Klan? Push Jesus aside and submit to the LGBTQ community? Push Jesus aside and submit to the African American community? push Jesus aside and submit to some Haitian woman who made the decision to submit to MacArthur in the community? Are we like you, Americans, when you become Christians, don't you push aside the unbelieving community and begin a relationship with God in Christ and continue that relationship? Regardless of whether or not there's an American history that consider you to be less than human.